Hi, I'm Stephanie Pfizer Coleman, a children's book illustrator, and today I want to chat with you about a book that just came out, which is called Five Flying Penguins. Ah, so cute. This is written by Barbara Barbieri McGrath, and it's illustrated by me, published by Charles Bridge. And I'm just going to be sharing some of my process with you today. I'm going to be walking you through my sketchbook and chatting about the process of researching these adorable penguins, nailing down the characters, and working on the sketches for this book, and also showcasing some of the final art. So let's take a look. So my first step after receiving the manuscript from Sarah, who is the de designer on this project, was to read through it a few times and start making some notes on ideas for each spread as well as questions I needed to answer. Like I wanted to know what sort of plants the penguins might see when they're swimming under the water or what the environments look like, what sort of fish they might be seeing when they're in this icy environment. So these little scribbles and notes on the manuscript were just my first step, just sort of getting ideas of what I wanted things to look like and how we wanted the motion to work. So the next thing that I did is I grabbed a new sketchbook. I like, whenever I'm working on a book, I like to have a specific sketchbook or two just for that project. That way I always know where all of my drawings are so I'm not left wondering what's going on. <laughs> where my drawings are, where my sketches are, everything is really organized. So I spent a lot of time drawing penguins from reference photos and watching a lot of cute penguin videos. <laughs> so these are actually some of the first sketches that I did for this project. And these are just random penguin sketches. And I put cute little notes in here like Gentoo Penguin Surf. I had no idea and I thought that was really cool. And then I also just did like some rough um, layouts of environments, like some of the, the icy sort of iceberg lo lo locations, um, stuff like that. And then I left like some more notes for myself. So these are just more environments. This is some of the plants that the penguins might see. And then this is just some rough sketches of some seaweed. And here I'm testing out some brush pens for the seaweed because I was thinking, that I might want to um, draw this in brush pen or paint it and then scan it into Photoshop and color it from there. Just playing around with some different techniques and ideas. And then here we've got more. We've got the leopard seals. And then I've got um, some more environment sketches. These are just some ideas for backgrounds, some ideas on how to draw the icebergs and some ideas on how the plant life might fit in. All right, so at this point, usually I would have the characters figured out, but I kind of wasn't sure how I wanted the penguins to look at this point. So instead of stressing myself out over it because I hadn't quite figured out the penguins, I decided to go ahead and start on my thumbnail layouts instead. Just kind of hoping that my subconscious would puzzle out the penguin conundrum. So for this part, I go back to my little manuscript um, notes that I've got listed here. I've got everything sort of sketched out or sort of written out like what I'm thinking of for each spread. And then for these thumbnails, I am sort of roughing in the spread and you can see that I've got some ideas, you know, as far as like the interaction and notes on things that I need to figure out, like how am I going to draw the speech bubbles? Because I was doing some hand lettering for this book and it was going to have speech bubbles. So I needed to figure that out. And I left myself a note that the seal needs to be cute, but not scary. Um, and then like some notes on the penguins um, to like how this this might work. So I know a lot, a lot of people use smaller thumbnails than this, but I like to do, you know, this particular size because it gives me tons of space to write notes, um, you know, and I was able to scribble in my hand lettering, things like that. So these are my thumbnails for the entire book. And you can kind of see that I was sort of figuring out like the penguin shapes as I went through here on my thumbnails. And these are just sort of rough ideas. And I didn't really draw in a whole lot of details. Like I hadn't drawn in a lot of the plant life that they would see um, or anything like that. This is just sort of a, a rough progress. 
All right, so that's the last of the thumbnails. Now I have the thumbnails down and I knew that it was time to get back to sketching the penguins. So I went in again and looked through my reference photos and looked through my earlier sketches and really started thinking about what these penguins would look like. I, originally, I was thinking that they would be sort of just like generic sort of characters of penguins. So I just did some more sketches, just sort of figuring it out, leaving some more notes. And this was a fun exercise too, because as I was doing these sketches, I was watching videos of penguins swimming underwater. So I was kind of getting a feel for like the motion of the thing, which I thought was really fun. And then like, I, wrote, I always write notes to myself. So like I said, like this guy is too generic and boring. <laughs> and then over here, I'm like, oh, should they be more generic? <laughs> I don't know. Um, this says just blurby enough because they, they're blurby penguins, you know, right? So I still love this guy. We didn't end up using this style, but I still love him. And then I've got, you know, just a few more penguins. And then after lots and lots of sketches, here are some pages I pulled out of my sketchbook of the penguins and the seal, just to use as reference because I thought they were really cute. But this is the original five penguins that I sketched out. So you can see that they were, they all have separate markings and I was intending to use different colors on their feet to help differentiate them. So this is where I was on my penguins. And at this point, it was time for me to start sketching in Photoshop. So I really like to rough sketch in my sketchbook, but I was gonna do final sketches in Photoshop because they're easier to revise and change and clean up if I need to. So here's some hand lettering sketches that I did for the interior because I was hand lettering it. And then this is one of the rough sketches that I did for the first spread in the book. Basically, I was just doing um, just some rough ideas of how the penguins needed to look and how maybe the seal would look if he was going to be peeking into the scene. I snapped a photo of this with my phone and then I brought it into Photoshop and then in Photoshop, I went ahead and continued with the sketch from there. So I'm going to switch you over to Photoshop now and we're going to take a look at what the sketch looked like for this very first spread in the book. All right, so here's what the first spread in the book looked like, the sketch, before I sent it to Sarah and Julia Charlesbridge for review. So this is where we started. Um, after they had a chance to review it, we needed to make a few revisions. And the big thing was that Sarah and Julie were hoping to have the penguins look less generic and more like actual species of penguin. So they settled on a list of penguins that could conceivably be on the same continent at the same time. And I got to work on revising sketches. So I really liked the, the shape of the original penguin characters that I decided on. I liked how they were sort of blocky and sort of short. I just thought it was kind of charming. So what I really wanted to do was just add the characteristics of our penguin species to these original characters. So I just started out by making some rough sketches of the penguin species that we were gonna be using. So we have a royal penguin, a king penguin, a Gentoo, an Adeli, and a Southern Rockhopper Penguin. And you see for each one, I just made some notes for myself about their unique characteristics. So like the Adeli Penguin has pink feet, a little bit of light pink under the wings, and a blue ring around the eye. Um, and then I also made a little height chart here so I could make sure that I was correct <laughs> when I was lining up my penguins that they were all going to be the same relative heights. Okay, so these are my notes and then sort of like mixed these with these original penguin character sketches and I made myself a little cheat sheet to use as reference so when I was going through and editing the sketches in the book it would be easy to make sure that I was drawing the correct penguins. So this is my reference sheet that I sketched up. I actually scribbled this up in Photoshop and printed it out for reference. And I've written, you know, what each kind of penguin is. And then I numbered them one, two, three, four, five, because that's the order that they speak in the book. And we wanted to make sure that they were in the correct order. So using this as my reference, I hopped back over into Photoshop and I revised the sketches. 
So let's take a look again at the original sketch for spread one. I'm gonna swap you back over to Photoshop now and we're gonna take a look at that. All right, so this is the original sketch for the first spread in the book. And then this is the revised sketch with our new, more species specific penguin illustrations. <laughs> All right, so after this, the sketches were approved and it was time for me to move on to working on color. So I started in by, I started out, I mean, just by blocking in some rough colors for the penguins um, and doing a really rough color layout just for the main colors of the background. I tend to change my mind quite a bit when I'm working on color, but starting out with a rough idea has always been a big help for me. So this is just the rough penguin layout, and then this is the rough background layout, and then here is what the final version of spread one looked like when it was all colored up. I found this book to be so fun to color because there's just a ton of texture and this really playful balance between a lot of cool colors and then pops of warm colors in the penguins throughout the book. So after the color, we just had a few tiny little revisions and little things to tweak and then the book was off to be printed. And then let me show you what spread one looks like in the book after it was all approved and sent off to the printers. This is what the first spread in the book ended up looking like. How cute is that? All right, so thanks for following along today. I'm gonna do another video soon that's gonna talk about the illustration process for the cover on this book. I'm gonna talk about my hand lettering and everything. But for now, if you're curious about these five flying penguins and their adventures, um, just look below this video in the links and I've provided links where you can find the book online, where you can also just check your local bookstore or your local library.